Uh, this is Ali Sadullah. I'm the session uh, chair of this uh, keynote speech. I am very honored to introduce Professor Mirja Ali as one of the keynote speakers of this conference. And thank you very much, Professor, for your presence, for your devoted time, and also accepting our uh, invitation for being a keynote speech keynote speaker. I don't uh, want actually to spend more time. Let's proceed to briefly introduce Professor Mirza Lili and his achievements. Uh, Professor Mirza Lili is the director of the Center of uh, Artificial Intelligence Research and Optimization at uh, Trans University Australia. Uh, he is uh, internationally recognized for his advances in swarm intelligence and optimization, including the first set of algorithms from a synthetic intelligence standpoint and a systematic design framework to reliably benchmark, evaluate, and propose computationally cheap, robust optimization algorithms. Professor Mujarili has published over 300 publications with over 35,000 citations and, and an H index of 65. As the most cited, research, cited, cited researchers in robust optimization, he is in the list of 1% highly cited, cited researchers and named as one of the most influential researchers in the world by reported, reported by Web of Science. Professor Mujarili is a senior member of IEEE and an associate editor of several journals, including Neural Computing, Applied Soft Computing, Advances in Engineering Software, Computers in Biology and Medicines, Applied Intelligence and IEEE, IEEE Access. Uh, his research interests include robust optimization, engineering optimization, multi-objective optimization, swarm intelligence, evolutionary algorithms, and artificial neural networks. He's working on the application of multi-objective and robust metaheuristic optimization algorithms as well. So the title of uh, his uh, keynote speech is about emerging optimization problems and algorithms. So, Professor Musabi, uh, Professor Mirjali, we are eagerly waiting for your fruitful uh, keynote speech. Uh, I am very happy to have you in this conference. Uh, if you're ready, we can start our keynote speech. Thank you. Sure, very thank much. you very much, Robert. Thank you very much, Dr. Sadullah, and I uh, appreciate your great introduction. Um, so, I'd like to first uh, thank um, everyone in the organization committee. I, I had a pleasure to attend several sessions last year. Last last week, last yesterday, and and also obviously last year uh, in other uh, venues, and it was quite fruitful and enjoyable. Lots of great presentations. So hope you are enjoying the conference so far, and a warm welcome to today's first keynote speech, uh, which is on emerging optimization problems and algorithm. Um, if you don't want to just hide and go to the full screen mode, so it will be a bit easier. Okay, so um, yeah, um, here's the uh, a quick uh, snapshot of what we are going to be going through today. Um, so my presentation is divided into two parts. The first part is about optimization problems, focusing on the key components and the workflow with decision makers to ensure that we can help them to find to, to solve their optimization problems, and then followed by the optimization algorithms. Um, so my intention is to go through. Obviously, some of the uh, issues with the traditional optimization algorithms, and also discuss and answer a very important question: why we are seeing a lot of nature-inspired algorithm these days, and uh, and and that's around emergent complexity theory as well. So uh, the reason why I start with the problem and the, not the algorithm is because I tend to look at the whole field through the lens of problem because. It's hard to say which algorithm is efficient, right? Which algorithm is the best until, unless we have a problem on hand, right? So it's a good uh, exercise to always look into different things. Uh, and this is obviously the, also the, where the community is heading, right? Um, and, uh, and, and a lot of people now focus more on the applied optimization rather than just the theoretical. Um, so uh, with that being said, we can uh, start with the first uh, part of this talk. Um, any optimization problems on this planet, uh, whether it's an optimizing an optimization of a device at the nano scale nano, nano level with nano scale, to designing and optimizing an aircraft wing, uh, massive structures, uh, buildings, and things like that, they have the same key ingredients or components, right? Um, so I use the term system here because it might be, be even an, a company, an organization that we are trying to optimize, you know, 
uh, let's say the operational costs or efficiency of uh, you know like employees and stuff like that. So any system has a sort of has a number of inputs. Why why do I use the, the term inputs? Because these are the unknowns, right? Often they are referred as decision variables, parameters. Um, and there's a lot of other names, but I think it a more generic is input. We are trying to find an optimal values for those inputs to achieve what? That's the second question, right? To achieve a certain goal. And that goal is defined by the output, which is often referred as objective function, cost function, fitness function, merit function. There's so many other names, but usually those are the, th that is the output of a system that allows us to judge whether a solution, a candidate solution for a system, which is a unique combination of those input is good or not, or how good it is compared to other uh, solutions. Um, but there's another components that a lot of people tend to overlook, and that is constraints, right? Constraints are usually applied to the inputs, right? And with constraints, we can filter some of the solution that might not be desirable for, for whatever reason. Usually in the industry, it's a preference given to you by a decision maker. Um, so, and, and after, and obviously the first step to solve any problem, and I, I can't stress how much that is important, is to do, is to formulate the problem by identifying these three components, right? Um, so often what happens is that when people in, approach us from industry or academia, I get them to create a spreadsheet, three spreadsheets in an Excel file, write about their inputs, constraints, and the output. Obviously, there are also, uh, there should be a lot of discussions around this as well, what type of inputs, what sort of constraints, so and so on and so forth, which I will discuss probably at some point later on, uh, what sort of framework we've got available. And obviously, once we, we, optimization experts have those parameters, three components, we can then formulate the problem, right? Without the loss of generality, I'm just trying to here minimize the function F, which is the output, and that's a function of all the inputs subject to those constraints, right? And after that, that's where an optimization algorithm comes into play, right? So obviously the role is to find the, an optimal values for the, those inputs, to maximize or minimize the output subject to not violating any of the constraints or subject to slight violation of constraints if you are allowed to, to, to violate them to some extent. So, and, and those three components uh, creates what we often call search space uh, or even search landscape, right? Because if you think about it, the, the process of finding is the best set of what well, the best input out of all the possible inputs, which were which is what we called candidate solutions for this system or this problem. Um, so out of those, there might be one or multiple of those that are um, that are good, right? That are the best solutions given the considering the outputs and the constraints, right? So in fact, we are trying to search, right, to pick one of those solutions out of the many. But now the question is whether it's viable to search all of them what sort of challenges we face, this is exactly where the next cell comes into play, which is about real world uh, problems, right? Um, often those three components, yet yeah, seems to be easy, but they create quite complicated, you know, search spaces, right? Um, in which we need to find the optimal value, but that optimal value might be quite he well hidden among several locally optimal solution, as you can see on this, uh, on this uh, 3D surface, right? or even the constraints, the constraints can be quite challenging. A lot of real world problems for those who've been involved in such project, they usually dominate the number of parameters and really create those, uh, you know, even it is it start, it makes it difficult to find any viable solution for the problem to start the optimization problem, let alone converging to a better solution, right? And the other challenge is obviously the, num the inputs, right? Usually I, I've, used, I've used two variables here or inputs to be able to visualize uh, a, a hypothetical objective function or search space. But in reality, usually you are dealing with a lot of variables, which makes data visualization difficult. And the size of search space is, is proportional to the number of those variables, okay? So um, now uh, what are the existing framework to work with uh, problem owner? So I, I tend to use the, the term problem owner instead of decision makers, because you know, somebody, when somebody approaches uh, and they have a problem, they, they own the problem. It's like you know, in a Scrum uh, software development life cycle, we've got a Scrum master and product, product owner, right? Um, so it's quite a similar analogy here. So 
what happens is that they come to us with an initial discussion between us and them. And that's where I get them to list down those uh, three components. And then we will have a lot of other discussion around the nature of those three inputs, which I'm about to you know, go through in a, in a moment. Right? So what we do, we sit down with them, we formulate the problem, and then we take, we, we, we go away and try to optimize the, uh, the, the problem, right? Diffusing different algorithms, compare them, whatever we do, we have to go back and show them the solution, right? If we are lucky enough, which is very unlikely, <laughs> Uh, they might say, well, that's the, a good solution. We are happy with it. And that's the end of the process, right? But often, um, again, uh, this is going to be an iterative process, right? So that means we need to go back and think uh, why the solution was not good enough. Is it the problem that causes an issue? Is it the way that we look at the problem, which is the formulation? Or is it the optimization process that may you know, lead to this uh, pool uh, or undesirable solution for decision makers, right? So this is an ongoing process and, and I, I tend to use a iterative process, uh, just like optimization that you know, we iterate to try to improve a solution. We have that sort of iterative, um, you know, what's it called framework as well for uh, applied optimization uh, project, right? This is, and obviously um, around each of those areas, there are so many best practices that you can uh, find you know, in, in the literature. We, I'm not gonna focus on those, but um, hopefully this framework um, you know, highlights the importance of communication between problem owners, decision makers, and us as optimization experts. Very important, that sort of communication. But what are other challenges? Yes, inputs, outputs, and constraints might be easy to list down, um, but, but usually there are so many challenges that we need to be aware of that, those to be able to help the problem owner to solve it, right? Often we are dealing with a large number of variables, which makes the problem substantially harder than small scale problems. Um, so in that case, if we know that the, the, the number of variables are large, we use larger scale optimization algorithm. The variables might be dependent, right? Some of the variables might be redundant even. So it's quite similar to feature selection in machine learning in which we try to you know, find an optimal set of features to maximize the performance of an, an ML technique, right? Here's also the same. Sometimes with that, through that iterative process, we might end up scratching, uh, scraping some of the input and say, look, let's put them this away, simplify the problem and then solve it. We make sure that the, the whole optimization system is functioning and let's scale up the complexity of the problem. Discrete and mixed integer problems, obviously. So some of the variables or those inputs might be discrete, some might be continuous. And probably the, the complexity is where you, are, you have a problem with uh, a mix of these, right? Some parameters, some variables discrete, some binary, some continuous and so on and so forth. Um, and obviously um, knowing that is quite important. And usually in real world problems, you are dealing with those sort of problems. Um, those sort of uh, inputs, I should say, with those diverse characteristics. Something that we don't usually do in simulation, we use benchmark functions and things like that that are quite, they're really perfect, either continuous, discrete, et cetera. But in reality, those are the challenges that we face. And last but not least, noisy inputs. Um, I'm quite passionate about this, uh, this well, I shouldn't say passionate about this challenge because it is a challenge, right? I'm passionate about addressing this challenge. Uh, and that's, I think, uh, well, that's my, what my, my, my PhD was all about. So we use simulators, obviously, there's so many approximations and uncertainty involved in the problem formulation, in the optimization process. Um, what happens is that when we find an optimal solution, when we give it to a manufacturer, when they build the system, there are usually small errors and perturbations, the resolution of devices. Those are sort of things that we may face, right? And what happens is that it works in simulations. Uh, as, as an optimization expert, we are confident it works, but in reality, sort of suddenly it shows poor, poor or a substantially different expected output. So robust optimization is what I uh, um, do as a part of my own research and my team expertise. So we, we will try to incorporate the noises and consider them though, consider those noises during the optimization process to find optimal solutions that are not just optimal but also um, error error tolerant. So that means in case of noises, the expected output are not uh, impacted substantially. So um, what about the constraints? Obviously, constraints are of different nature, right? 
some constraints are equality constraints, inequality, some constraints are, are 